Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming back for part three of my, or heart, mind, body business with Level Up Nation, Stacey Prier and Dustin Pritchard. Hey, Stace, how you doing? I'm good, how are you, Dustin? I'm super fantastic. I ain't cold, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, yeah. Dig. That's me digging out my car. You know what, I'm, I don't care about the vacation shamers anymore. I'm just like, you know what, you want to live this life? Like, earn it. Let's do this. Let's freaking do this. I worked hard for this. So I'm going to fucking enjoy, excuse me, I'm going to enjoy this. So, uh -huh, I'm you going to- French already this morning? Huh? I said, you speak in French already this morning, Dustin? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I am. I totally am. Yeah, for sure. This is not your grandpa's podcast. I know, no. that's your infamous line. So guys- well, I'm awake now. Are you <laughs> awake now? Let's do that. <laughs> oh, you're on the West Coast too. Are you in, uh, where are you? Where are San you at? Diego. You're in San Diego. And Paul, you're both in San Diego? Yeah. Ooh, okay. So gentlemen, I think we, have, we should have a chat because I want to be able to penetrate the San Diego market. And let's talk about that a little bit because uh, there, there could be some serious opportunities. There. Anyways, let's get down to it. So today we're going to be talking about our bodies. Yes, we are. And not body shaming. Uh, <laughs> and no body shaming, no vacation shaming. So one of the things, again, we'll reiterate this in heart, mind, body business, we want to approach business from a holistic approach. So we've talked about getting your heart into your business, getting your mind into your business. And the other thing that we wanted to talk about is getting your body into your business. So Again, Dustin and I, we wanted to share our stories. We want, actually wanted to talk, uh, talk to you guys a little bit about the format. Are you guys liking how we're sharing our stories, talking about different talking points, and then opening it up to the group um, for feedback? Do you guys all like that, or do you prefer? I, I think it's great, personally. I think it's great just being able to speak about our fears or challenges in a safe place. And have people validate them and to know that you're not alone with it and you grow with these people like you guys it's awesome i think so wonderful thank you yeah well, we were stacy just oh go ahead yes yeah, stacy i have to admit i do feel a little uncomfortable be opening up to people i don't know yep and so it's kind of a transition for me so if i seem to be holding back it's because i just don't feel comfortable Quite all hey, right. Just, just picture everyone as me, because you don't seem to have an issue uh. opening up to me. <laughs> <Hey>. Whatever. <laughs> it's called my partner Paul over here. He's in a lovely wig today. Hey. How you doing, Paul? What's up, Pauls? You guys are so funny. I'm going to get a Paul face cut out. So when it's Wayne's turn to talk, you know, I'll just put Paul faces on. <laughs> And I see Paul. And I see Paul. Lisa, how do you feel about this format? <laughs> well played, Bill. Well played. Oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah, job. I'm good with it. That's fine. I, I, I have no problem sharing with people that I don't know, but I know all you guys now. So. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. No, it's good. We just need to get a little bit of feedback on on if you're getting, uh, if this was impactful at the format and being able to talk to you, sharing our stories, but also to get you guys to share with each other a little bit as well, because uh, we didn't want to just talk at you, right? We wanted to have a conversation. Yeah, I think that's what's going to add extra value to everybody. And I just wanted to make sure, we just wanted to make sure that we were on par with that, so... Cool. Anyways, without further ado, Dustin, would you like to go first and share your body story and then I'll share my body story? Sure. I know your body is a wonderland, so bring it to us. <laughs> so, yeah. Wait, like that. Wade's got a big smile on that. <laughs> <laughs> Wade, how you doing, Wade? How you, how you doing? <laughs> All right. Uh, no, I, um, okay. So take you back in time. Um, all right, body story shit. Okay, well, uh, I was always a fat kid. I was I was always the big kid. I was the second biggest kid in my high school. Uh, the biggest kid had a hormone problem, and uh, so I was I was a big kid. I played football and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it came from it came from insecurities. It came from um, you know 
being emotionally hurt as a kid and all that kind of stuff, right? And so obviously we build up that padding around ourselves to protect ourselves, our, our soft underbelly. And uh, for many, many years, it was just a big dude. And um, and I have a frame so I can wear it well, you know, half decent. I, I, I didn't look like a, a big behemoth or anything like that, but I was a mountain. And I remember, and, and, and it was just, like I was successful in business and I was successful doing X, Y, and Z. I built my last brokerage as a big dude, right? So like it, it didn't really get in the way of my ambition and what I wanted to achieve in business, and, uh, but it was getting in the way of, uh, of my own personal growth. And it was getting in the way of, uh, it was getting in the way of my professional growth. Uh, and and it, was, uh, it was something that needed to change. And so I was in, I was in St. Lucia and, um, and uh, I was in St. Lucia one year. Uh, this was, what was it, four, I think three years ago now. I, three years ago now, I was in St. Lucia. And so this is recent for me. I'm 46 years old, so I'm 43 years old, give or take. Um, and uh, in St. Lucia, and we had just gone grocery shopping and picked up a whole bunch of food. And a friend of mine um, had just posted on Facebook that he'd lost 40 pounds in the space of like six weeks. And, uh, and I, t I messaged him like, dude, how'd you do this? And he says, I just cut out sugar and carbs. I'm like, interesting. And at that point in time, I'm just, I got so angry. I was just got so bloody angry at the fact that I was continuing to go down this path. And at that point in time, I, uh, I, I literally made a decision. I got so pissed off. I said, enough enough. I packaged everything that I got at the grocery store up and I gave it to the cleaners. And then we went back out shopping and just got everything with no carbs, no sugar, just, just protein and veg. That's it. And I just hit that hardcore for uh, a year and lost 80 pounds. And it's, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, and, uh, and I didn't even work out. <laughs> I was just, it was just food. Right. And then I started working out again because I lost a bunch of muscle and I hated not being strong again. So I worked out and I got my muscle back and all that. So that was, that was also awesome. But the, the main thing that, that really pissed me off was that I knew that I couldn't step into who I was supposed to be and achieve the things that I want to achieve if I didn't let go of that, that mental block, didn't let go of that insecurity, didn't let go of that, that, you know, the, the things that I had inside that, that I, that, that the negative patterns, the negative self-image, the negative, you know, the false beliefs that I kept on, I was feeding myself for years and years and years and years. And it just became part of my status quo, right? It just became part of my mindset. And, and it was really the mindset. It wasn't the physical, it was the mind. It was the heart. It was the mind that had to change. And once I started doing that, uh, like, and, and this is, and I went on a spiritual journey. I went to Thailand and I, I hiked from the north to the south, backpacked all over the place on my own and, and spent a month in Thailand and just really went on that, that fire walk. And when I came back, like everything changed. So I lost a ton of weight and then I went on this fire walk and I, I decided that there was, there was no more room in my life for those belief systems, those patterns, those, those toxic relationships. I was also in a very, very toxic relationship uh, and uh, uh, with a business partner. I was, all, I was in a very, very difficult space. And at that point in time, I said, you know what? There's, life is too short for me to continue down this path, not living my best life, not being my highest and best self, not delivering the most I can possibly deliver to other people. And that's, uh, for me, it was, it was all this. It was, it was all up here. And I was just sick and effing tired of, uh, of continuing that pattern. And so at that point in time, I, it was easy. It, was, it wasn't easy, it was hard, but it, the mental shift was, I just got pissed. I just said, fuck it, I'm done. I'm, I'm just done. I cannot do this one more day, not one more day. But it took me almost two years to go through the entire process. So that's my physical. Yes, that was quite a process. And, but also it gave you rejuvenated energy. It gave you a rejuvenated mindset. And yeah. the overall, once you were able to shed your baggage and your, like literally your weight, mm -hmm. you were able to push forward and move forward in a new direction. Um, like yeah, literally it's, and metaphorically. It's <laughs> like being, yeah, it's just like you're trying to fly. You're trying to fly. You're trying to fly, but you got a rope around your ankles, and and uh, you're you're you know you got stones at the end of it. Like it's it's 
difficult to do. And I decided, you know, it was done. Cut those ropes, no more anchors. And once I was willing, and it's scary guys, even the negative shit that you go through right now that are, that's causing any kind of physical, you know, where you're at mental, physical, whatever it is, that's a pattern. And, and even if it's negative and crappy and it sucks and it hurts you and it hurts your family and hurts everything, it's still a pattern that you get used to. And, and again, just like our last call, like uh, your reptilian brain, it wants to protect you and help you survive. Any change means that there's a potential of death. And so you've got this natural fear of change. But at that point in time, I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not afraid anymore. It's, it's time. And I, and I cut it and then just, and then I, I couldn't stop the massive, massive roller coaster change that was happening in my life. And it wasn't always easy. Actually, a lot of it was really, 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 really hard. Um, but it was worth it. Every single minute of it was worth it. It was worth it. Which is awesome. Thank you, Dustin. And now would you say you have mega momentum? <laughs> that? I, 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 now would you say that you have mega momentum uh i'm building it i i'm, I'm not quite there yet you know what i mean Build like it, I will come. my business model my clientele is different from buyers to sellers right so uh, i'm building it up and building that persona i'm building all of those things and and i'm just starting to see the engine turning right just now and once it really starts ramping that's when i have mega momentum but i've got to build it just like everybody else Yes, absolutely. All right. So instead of stalling, I'll just jump into mine, I guess. <laughs> I keep throwing things back at you, but we are on a time limit. Phil will start giving me the countdown soon. So um, anyways, guys, so my story, one of the reasons why I want to share this story is because I think that a lot of times we have um, deep rooted fears and insecurities. And a lot of times it comes from when we were younger. Um, so why I want to share this, I'm going to go way, 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 way back. Um, cause I'm 40. So it's like way back. You guys are like, shut up. <laughs> you're like, at least it's like, you're just a little peanut, shut your face. Um, but <laughs> anyways, so one of the things that I really realized and I was able to identify is, um, when I was, uh, six years old. My parents had separated, I gained weight and I had really bad buck teeth. So I had buck teeth with a space in the middle that would like sit on my lip. And um, I got made fun of from my family. I got made fun of from kids at school. I started gaining weight because I was getting made fun of all the time. I always laugh because when I hear the fat bastard thing, I eat because I'm unhappy and I'm unhappy because I eat. I like that, that actually was like a legitimate thing. Um, and I didn't realize, obviously at six, I didn't have the mental capacity to realize that I was stuffing things in my mouth to feel a, fill a void. So I started getting insecure because people started making fun of me. And then I was taller than most of the girls at the time, which is weird because it didn't really phase out past 12. Like I could use a few more inches, but either way. Um, so what happened was they used to, I was nicknamed the beast. I was nicknamed Bucky. I was nicknamed all sorts of different things. And I, instead of shying away from it, I actually learned to lean into it. And because I actually was friends more with the boys, the boys would always make fun of each other. So that's where I really learned how to develop a sense of humor and a sense of self. And then I realized that other people's baggage and other people's perceptions of me um, were a reflection of their own insecurities. And whether they were making fun of me or not, because they actually truly thought those things, I didn't feel I deserved that. And I had a really strong, stubborn mentality. So yes, I was a chubbier kid. Yes, I did have buck teeth, but I was really smart and I had a really great personality and I didn't give a rat's ass what people thought. So I learned how to use my mouth. And that was my biggest weapon because anytime anyone came at me, I would put them in their place. I would make fun of them. I would make people laugh. And I really used humor as a sense of um, a coping mechanism. But I learned also later on in life, in my teen years, uh, same kind of thing. I was always very insecure. And I always thought boys wanted to be my friend. They didn't want to be my boyfriend. So I always had this, I'm not good enough because of my body image. And because, again, my friends, my family, like 
my mom would call me thunder thighs. My dad would say, don't worry, you'll be pretty when you're older. Um, I would get like literally <laughs> cat calls from the street. Do you want some fries with that shake? And I remember some guy coming up to me and being like, I can see the cottage cheese on your leg for your tights. You should probably not wear those. And I was like 27 years old. And I was like, what the hell, man? And it's not like, it's not like I was that, like I was a size like 14, 16. So I didn't consider myself like to be like large and in charge. But even if I was it, like, they had no right to say those things to me. So before I used to defend myself, but then I learned strength and silence because I was like, honestly, there's so much ugliness that is coming out from these people that I was like, what the hell? But I was internalizing it. And then I kept my mouth shut. So then I just kept swallowing it. And it was one of those things where um, it was, I guess, swallowing my pride. So instead of sticking up for myself, like I did as that feisty little kid, I just took it and I was like, you know what? I don't like, I don't even want to entertain this. But I started taking on the stress in my body. Mentally, I was like, you know what? I don't deserve this. I haven't earned this. I, I'm just going to let it go. Then when I was with my ex-spouse and I was going through the fertility program, I put on more weight. Um, he would constantly make comments and say, I don't want to be with you because um, I'm not physically attracted to you anymore. Your belly's hanging over. Like you're, I actually did get called the, a fat, ugly C word on multiple occasions. So my body image was so small. And it's funny because there is a million compliments on my Facebook page at all times of so many wonderful people that are like, you're so beautiful, you're so this. Like, I wish people could, see, like you could see yourself the way. And I'm like, it's been hard because it's, it doesn't matter if you hear 50 great things. It's that one thing that you're super insecure about that you've been insecure about since your childhood that will drill it home and completely ruin your day and cause you to feel like you're in a funk. So last year when I was going through my big epiphany of things, um, I really had to do some root work. And when I say root work, it's going back to the very basics. When did I feel this way? Who was the person that made me feel this way? Why did I feel this way? Why did I believe what they said? Because when you can believe something, that's when you receive it. So if I'm believing these things, I'm openly letting these things enter into my life. So one of the things that I really had to do is I had to look at myself naked in a very literal and metaphorical way. I looked at myself in the mirror naked and I was like, do I believe what these people are saying or not? And I don't, I actually don't think that I'm a fat, ugly cunt. I don't think that I have cottage cheese thighs or thunder thighs. I think I'm a voluptuous shapely woman and whether i'm 256 pounds 175 pounds it is no one's business but my own and i own that they don't own that and they don't get to own anything from me and i took that and i applied that principle to my business because i'm not going to sit there and think that i'm not good enough i'm not going to sit there and think that i'm a fraud i'm not going to sit there and think that i don't know anything or that people have a right to tell me how to run my business my body or my life because I am strong here, I'm strong here and I'm strong here. So I changed my lifestyle. I got the, instead of drinking and smoking weed and you know numbing the pain, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna deal with the pain. I'm gonna cry. And I was calling it ninja tears because I'd be okay some days. And then some days like a song would come on. I'd be like, oh my God, why? And I was like, you know what, I'm going to own that shit because at the end of the day, it's just going to make me stronger. So I started watching what I put into my body. I did start losing weight. I started working out with a personal trainer, but doing workouts that I love. I fucking hate exercise. Sorry for my F-bombs, but I hate it. I am not a very athletic person. I am a, like, I like to go dance. So I hired a trainer who trains me in dance. And like, we literally dance and do dance exercises. So now I'm looking forward to doing it and treating my body the way my body loves to be treated. I, instead of like being like, oh, if I do this, I'm going to reward myself with a big cheesecake. No, I go and reward myself with a spa day. 
awesome. I'm not putting crap into my body and I'm actually doing something that's great for my body. So now that I, I've changed my body, I do feel more confident because I love my body. I'm not perfect. And like I said before, I'm a 40 year old woman. I am not going to look like a 20 year old model. It's never going to happen. I'm never going to do it. I'm past that. I am a five foot three quarters person and I will take those three quarters because they mean a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And I weigh what I weigh and I will wear what I want to wear. And if people don't like it, they don't have to look. They can go in someone else's ozone. So, and that's the way I feel about my business. I am passionate about my business. I'm passionate about the people that I surround myself with. And I'm passionate about what I do and what I put out there. So if you think I wear too much makeup, don't look. You don't like how I dress if I wear all black all the time, don't look. I don't care. I am happy with me. My body is my temple and I'm happy with how I worship my temple. And I know that's cliche, but it's something that I really had to learn. And I really had to be okay with embracing the things that I love about myself and being okay with the things I want to change about myself. And this is what I wanted to communicate in this segment, because we all go through our insecurities. We've all had had people hate and we've all had some sort of shame and we've all encountered there's no one on this planet i don't care who the f you are there's always been someone who tries to cut you down make you feel insecure and make you feel insignificant and you can choose to believe them or you can choose to lean into it and give it back to them or you can choose to just absorb it deflect it and move on with your life but that is why having a strong body physically and mentally to bring yourself in this business because it's not an easy industry. You have to be at your peak performance at all times. And also one of the things that Dustin and I wanted to talk about is burnout. So I just shared my story. And then the next thing I want to, we wanted to get into is taking well, your body to the limit. Let me just pause for a second. Does anybody have any questions or comments or anything like that before we get into the other stuff after our personal Tear jerking and emotionally heart wrenching stories. Yeah, I have a question for Stacy. So, Stacy, all these people are they still in your life, or did you slowly get rid of them? Um, obviously, people that were assholes in grade school and high school, I, I don't <laughs> keep in my life. But my mom, I couldn't really like the track. Um, what I had to do was set up boundaries. So, when people were saying things about me, I turned it around on them. And I basically just said, listen, like, I know that you're my mother and I know that you're my father and I love you guys dearly, but do you realize what you're doing to me? Like, do you love me? Because if you love me, you wouldn't talk to me this way because this is how it makes me feel. And when I presented it in that light to them, they felt awful. They apologized profusely and they told me stories about what their parents used to say to them. And in their mind, being overweight was a bad thing because back in the day, having an overweight child, I guess, was a huge stigma and it's considered to be unhealthy. Whereas in this day and age, um, people are a little bit more like we're a little bit more body positive on a lot of different things. So they apologized to me because that was a mindset that was ingrained in them. And they're like, you're such a beautiful girl. But if you just lose them, like, no, no buts. Don't talk about my butt and don't give me a butt. Like, this, just love me just the way I am. And my dad actually said to me, Stace, um, he's like, I really, like, I grew up, my parents say this, I listen to them and that's just the way it is. And he's like, I know you love your mom and pip a lot. He's like, but there's things that they've said and done to me that I didn't agree with. And I was like, okay, let's talk about it. So then we did. And at the end of that conversation, he's like, I love you so much. I want you to know that. Like, I would do anything for you. Like you are my life. And he's like, I want you to know that you've taught me how to live. And I was just like, huh. He's like, you are a risk taker. He's like, you, you do things that not everybody does. Like nobody does. And he's like, I just, I'm so concerned for you all the time. And I was like, dad, you don't have to stop being my father, but you have to treat me the way that I deserve to be treated, not the way that you were treated. So these are my boundaries and we need to communicate more. And if you disagree, and if you're scared, if you're afraid for something, know that you're always going to be my father. And your job for me is to pr provide me with love. That's all I need from you. I'm a grown ass woman now. 
And if I, if the world crashes on me and I need a roof over my head, can you give me that? And he said, yeah. And I said, if I feel like the world hates me and I, I like the world is crashing around, I'm like, can you give me love? Can you, can you be my best friend? And he said, yeah. So then that's how I was able to establish those boundaries with them. That's good. That's good. Any other questions or comments about the stories that we shared, guys? I just want to say I don't really know Stacy very much. Just getting to know everyone, but I feel so proud of you because I, I, I mean, I've been through different circumstances, um, but just I visualize, you know, the little girl in you and everything you went through and like you have turned out to be so wonderful and beautiful inside and out from what I can tell. And so just my heart is like bursting because I could just see the little girl, because, you know, she's made it, you know, she went against all odds. Well, from what people would think in their mind, you know, this little girl who uh, isn't up to their expectations, but here you are. So I'm so happy you're in a much better place. Thanks, Lindsay. I appreciate that. Cool. And, yeah. I have no. to agree with Lindsay. I don't okay. see what those assholes saw. I look at this beautiful woman inside and out. I'm like, what are they talking about? Yeah, so that's why I ask if those people are still in your lives, because I reached a point where I had to take out the trash mm -hmm. without lack of a better word. And I filled that dumpster up with people who were just like the people you mentioned. And yeah. me too. Yeah. And it wasn't until I got rid of those people that I had a different outlook on life and how I saw myself. And I realized I wasn't all those things that those people said that I was. No. And I was one of those people. I was just like, you know what? It's time for you to go. Yeah. Because you're not adding any value to my life. So I'm taking out the trash. Amen. And it worked. Man, does it ever. I asked my ex-husband why he said those things if he loved me. And he, his response was, I had nothing else. And I was like, what? And he's like, he's like, there's nothing else I could say mean about you. He's like, you're an incredible person. And he's like, the only thing I could do was tap into things that you were insecure about. And that's, and that's getting into taking out the trash, right? Because if someone loves you, they don't treat you that way. And mm -hmm. even if they do love you, you have to set boundaries. And it doesn't matter, family, friends, coworkers, you are the one who is in charge of setting up how people treat you, how, treat, how they treat your body, how they treat your environment, um, and no one else. That's you right. have a choice. It's not always an easy choice, but you have choices. Yeah, I agree with um, Lindsay. I think they've seen your strength before you even notice you have your strength. And I think that feared him. I think that feared him. Most, well. most think. definitely. I think you nailed it right there. Yeah, it did. Here's the shit out of That was what could hold you back. And they use it against you because they know the power you had. Oh, God. Yeah. This is scares the shit out of most dudes, trust yeah. me. Oh, yeah. That's actually uh, like my dating life sucks. Most of them are like, you're, you're intimidating. I'm like, okay, whatever. I really want to like use a profile picture with like the Xena warrior princess outfit. <laughs> like if I'm going to be intimidating, we're going to go all out. Might as well. you, might, you might as well. It's like, look, yeah. this is what you're going to get. So get yourself prepared, right? Yeah. You better hit the gym, you better work out and get your mental game straight because yeah. otherwise, boom, I'm just going to crush your ass. It's awful. Anyways, we wanted to talk about a couple of other things as well. So this is a good segue because we both lost weight. We both you know, went through a physical journey. It's a good segue to talk in about your body as your temple and, and, and going into and taking care of your physical self. Like one of the reasons why I made that big change is because I knew that if I wanted to become this attractive character, and I'm not saying attractive, oh, you're attractive. I mean like an attractive character, attracting positive, amazing energy to me. I, and, and I imagine myself, I'm on stage, I'm talking to a large group of people, I'm teaching, I'm training, I'm coaching, who is standing on that stage? Right. And I couldn't imagine my old self standing on that stage. So I'm like, OK, so that's who needs to be on that stage is this is 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 trim and tall and confident shoulders back, looking people straight in the eye and saying, this is how you do it. 
And so I needed to go through that, that particular, that change. Uh, and I, and I used it with food. I did with food. I eliminated all the bad foods that was causing me those issues. First off, I had to do the mental work because the, the body is a reflection of the inside. So I had to do the mental work first. I had to do that work. But then I went through, you know, I didn't exercise, but I did food. And then I started exercising. And um, I'll tell you one of the things that I did, because I hate exercise. I'm worse than Stacey. I hate it. It's not just like I'm not good and I'm not an athlete. I'm actually athletic. I'm actually good at games and sports and stuff like that. I just hate it. I just, I'd rather be doing other things. So I gamified it. So I put it publicly. I said, I'm going to do a 60-day workout challenge. And every single day, I would take a picture of my progress of me with my shirt off on, and I put it up on my story on Facebook every single day. And, and that was a really big comfort zone thing for me. That was really big. But I had to gamify my own brain because I knew that if I didn't make myself accountable, and if I didn't attach it to my persona that's attached to business, then I wouldn't do it. I'd find an excuse. But as soon as I attached to business, which is important to me, as soon as I attached it to something like that, I was able to push myself and I did it. I did 60 days every single day for 60 full days straight. That was the first time I've ever worked out for 60 days in my life, right? Probably, I think that's probably the most I've worked out in a year. <laughs> but it, like I got on my muscle back, you know what I mean? And I, and I felt freaking awesome. Um, but that's, that's what I had to do to create that temple. Also, you know, meditation, nature, fresh air and all that kind of stuff. That's what I had to do. So my journey is a little bit different. <laughs> um, I went through a little bit of a, a phase because I was going through it. Thanks, Dustin, for sharing that, by the way. Sorry, I don't want to not acknowledge that. Um, I feel but, like I'm now. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of did a few other like funny things. Uh, I was 39 and I was just like, you know, try things so I went through a little bit of a drinking phase as you can see here uh, by my mini bar <laughs> um when I was releasing myself from my business my marriage my old life um my cleansing path went through a little bit of this and then I watched a documentary on microdosing so then I tried microdosing with mushrooms just to see how that went um that was an experience don't recommend it. It's not what it was cracked up to be on the documentary. Um, and I just, I really was trying to do a lot of things other than do the actual work. So with my body being a temple, uh, what I was doing was drinking excessively, occasionally trying to smoke weed and occasionally trying to do mushrooms to numb the pain. And then I was working excessively. So I figured out I was a very functional alcoholic. If I just did a little bit during the day, and just is like just enough to like get going, but it's not healthy. So I was working uh, 12 hour days and probably starting my day off with a Jameson and Bailey's, then moving to a vodka crayon, then moving to some wine with dinner. But you know, no big deal. Um, and being in real estate and working from home, it's easy to slip into those vices, right? So I was trying to numb my pain so I could focus my mind on my business. And what was happening was I was burning out mentally and physically, and I wasn't doing anything good for myself. So uh, May of 2020 was when I kind of scrapped everything. I hired a personal trainer. I started eating organic. And then um, I did similar to what Dustin did, cut out sugar, cut out carbs. And then I was actually eligible for the stomach surgery that I needed to get uh, because I had some digestive issues and ulcers and all sorts of fun, funky stuff. So I had to be, uh, I had to have a, a clean diet uh, to go into that surgery. But what I did find was I had renewed energy, renewed clarity, and I was actually taking time off, um, forced time off. Uh, to take care of myself and heal, which is what I really needed. And when we're talking about your body as your temple, a lot of entrepreneurs get into this where they get into a burnout and then they start using substances, whether it's Coke, whether it's caffeine, um, whether it, you, you're you so busy with the noise that then at night you numb yourself with other party favors or substances so you can sleep. Um, that is very common and it sucks because if you don't get a hold of it 
like there's a lot of alcoholics that are in real estate. There's a lot of people who do different things because that's just what they do. Um, but it's because they work hard and then they play hard. So one of the things that you need to do is really take control of your life, what you put into your body, because if you want to have sustainability over a long period of time, you have to fill your body with micronutrients, not microdosing. And you have to really like, you have to make sure that your body's in peak performance. So you have to have downtime, mental downtime, physical downtime. You also have to have physical activity. So if it's just going for a walk, if it's just meditation, you need to give your body that recuperation time, especially over 35, man, shit gets crazy. Like things- It gets crazy. Can I segue a little bit on that, Stacey? Yes, please do. Uh, can I ask you guys, who here would consider themselves a workaholic? Yeah? Lisa, you don't feel like you're a workaholic? Is Lisa frozen? No? Just the doing the Wilson thing. We can only see half of her face. You can only see your nose up. That's all we can see. That's how Lisa rolls. Yeah. That's how Lisa rolls. All I'm right. So, glad of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me ask a different way. Who here would sacrifice a lot of things for their business? Scott said this to me. So who here would sacrifice personal time or would sacrifice, you know, the, the, the nap you're going to take or the nature walk for business? Who would sacrifice those things for business? Scott says yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, a lot of people in real estate, especially, but if you're an entrepreneurial mindset, um, there is this, there is this paradigm in entrepreneurialism that um, that you need to sacrifice everything. That the only way to get to the success story that you want to become is on a mountain of sacrifice. And yes, you do have to work harder than the average person. Yes, you can have the highest of highs, and you can also have the lowest of lows as an entrepreneur. You can ride a bit of a roller coaster. Um, and a lot of entrepreneurs, they feel, especially if they're supporting their family and things like that. Like I, you know, my parents were in retail for 15 years, had a chain, chain of retail menswear stores. And the amount of time that I saw them dedicate to their business, uh, it was incredible. It was incredible. But this is also where I learned um, that taking time off is actually work. So it's a, it's a paradigm shift. It's a, it's a shift in your in mental in mentality. So think of it like this. You've got an employee in your in your job, right? And if you work that employee like ten hours a day, ten, you know, seven days a week, no time off, how many months can that employee keep on going until they burn out and then they cause you a whole bunch of money because they have to take two months off because they got sick? You've just spent a lot of time, energy, and money training that person, and now that person is no longer filling that role for a couple of months. You've got to get a replacement for that person. You got to train that replacement, and then that person comes back, and you got an HR issue, and it's just a shit show. Okay. So that's you. If you were working every single day, all the time, right, you're going to fall into that kind of a paradigm. So what would you do to correct that with that particular employee, Bob, the employee, right, Bob, the employee that you're paying to do a job and you need that job to be done for you every single day, work day, right, Monday to Friday, let's say. And if Bob doesn't do that job, it's highly disruptive for your business. What would you say to Bob? If Bob was working 10 hours a day, seven days a week for six months straight, and you're like, I'm, I'm going to lose Bob. What would you say to Bob? What would you say? Take some time off. Cool. Take some time off. Yeah. Take weekends off. Here's a couple of long weekends. Here's a couple of extra days. Let's take care of you. Right? Well, that's an investment in your business. Wouldn't you agree? That if you're, if you're basically saying, Bob, you know what? You've been rocking and I love you, man. And I don't want you to burn out. So I'm going to give you a couple of paid days off. Right. Bob would appreciate it. Right. Absolutely. It, it costs you money as a business. Does it not? Cause you're giving them paid days off, but it's an investment. Well, you're, you're no different as an entrepreneur. No. And that's, that's the truth. So we're at the time now where we've got 15 minutes left. Do you, should we open this up to an open group discussion on what are their body challenges? And maybe if you guys have any sort of um, questions that you want to ask us um, with your obstacles and limitations, I think we'd be 
happy to answer that if anyone and has it's open as well to your physical space, right? The, yeah. the space that you work in as well. Like David Wally, you saw him. He's got a, a family issue that's not aligned with his business goals, right? You saw, you witnessed that, how painful. You could feel that pain from him, right? And we were able to support him a little bit, but he still has to go through that journey. So like for me, I had to eliminate toxic relationships and business partners out of my life in order for me to move forward. So that's your physical space as well. And that's all part of the body. So why don't we open it up and have a, have a bit of a discussion. Did you guys have anything that you wanted to talk about or ask or tell a story of your own? I have something that I don't know if it's, it's not about my body, but it's something that I went through yesterday. And it's something that I, I, I have an issue with is, so I had a, um, a Facebook live interview scheduled with, um, with a vendor, right? Mm -hmm. And he happens to be a friend of mine. Um, and, you know, we made plans to meet early. I played golf with him and uh, yesterday, and we made plans to meet early before our round. Um, you know, I, I sent him the questions <clears throat> so he could prepare his answers. Um, you, you know, I thought I, I thought I had set up a structure to, to get this thing, thing accomplished. Um, well, he didn't show up um, early, like we had discussed, uh, when we did meet, um, he did, he wasn't really, um, focused on doing the lot, you know, doing this interview. And I asked him, if, you know, I, I, I had my camera, everything ready. I asked him, Hey, you ready to do this? And he kept, he kept giving excuses, right? Well, so after a couple times of me asking, Hey, we should get this done and, and getting resistance from him, um, I, I just stopped, right? I'm, I just stopped pushing and, and I'm like, okay, I'm just, you know. So, so my issue is, you know, how hard do I go um, or when do I pull back, right? Like, and, 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 and thinking back on it, I, I, you know, like I wanna be a bulldog, but, but, then, but my um, natural instinct is not to be, right? Cause I'm amiable, so. Um, so yeah, so yesterday I had all the intentions to do this. Um, and then, and then I just, I stopped pushing for it. So I think naturally with any sort of client or anything like that, whether it's friends, family or whatever, usually if you have something where it, you have a dedicated time, you do the follow-up, uh, call at five minutes, then you call or text again at, uh, 10 minutes. And then by 15 minutes, if they're still not engaging, then you ask if they're, you ask what the obstacle was. Um, and if there's like, did they have a personal issue? Are they shy to do this on camera? Um, see if you can overcome any objections. And if there are no objections and they're just flaking on you, then you have to move on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, for sure. It's called walk away leverage. You need to approach your business and everything that you want to do every single day with such absolute certainty that you are going to achieve X, Y, and Z and also make backup plans for your time, right? So there's obviously things that you can be doing with your time if that meeting falls through. For example, you do an open house and you got a two hour window, you're sitting in the house. If it's a goose egg and no one shows up, what are you doing in that time, right? So at the end of the day, it's like, okay, I've got this book booked and we're going to do this together. But if you flake on me, and like Stacy was saying, you know, if, if you go through the obstacles and there's nothing there and they're still ghosting on you, they don't want to do it. Yeah. Right. They're not excited. So if they're not excited, move on. Right. Like you got to be excited about where you're going, have the walk away leverage and say, I got, I got five things on my list that I got to do today. You're one of them. Right. And at the end of the day, if you're one of them and, and you're off my list, now you're off my list. Boom. Next. And then reschedule somebody else. Just approach your business plan with such certainty and walk away leverage the fact that you don't actually need anybody to help you get there, that almost anybody can fill those slots for you because you know exactly what you're doing every single day for the rest of the week. Right. And the other thing, too, is he might be a chicken, but if you see someone else doing it, then he'll want to do it. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, that was one of the um, objections. And I said, hey, um, you know, we're, we'll practice. But before I hit the record button, you know, we've got the questions. And like, I go, I'm not great at it either. Like, I, I'm scared shitless, right? But I just hit go and, and do it. But hey, let's practice. Um, and, you know, and so, 
also in the back of my mind is, um, am I not being, am I not communicating or teaching him well enough that he is comfortable, you know, doing this, right? Well, you guys have gone through a, a bit of a, a mind shift by joining Mega Momentum. You've committed to a challenge and you've committed to achieving results. And you've also committed to go through the growth and the discomfort uh, that you need to go through to build some of those skills that you're not used to. He hasn't, right? He hasn't made that commitment. He hasn't done that commitment to himself or to anybody else. He's not publicly accountable to anything. So um, uh, I uh, actually, uh, oh, shoot, what's her name? Oh crap. She interviewed me yesterday. Anyway, she was, she was like deathly afraid. She's like, I've never done this before. Oh my God. It's like, yeah, I don't want to do it live. I'm like, let's just record it. Let's just have a conversation. Ask me a couple of questions. We'll talk for 10 minutes. You record it. And then you're in control because then you can, you can splice it, snip it. You can make it look as polished as you want to make it look. And now you're in control. And if you don't like it, you don't publish it. Right. So you can, you can make them a little bit more comfortable that way if you want to, because that, that does work. Okay. It doesn't have to be live every time because you can actually record it and then post it and do a watch party and it almost creates a live kind of atmosphere. Yeah. Anyone else got some questions? Well, I want to respond uh, to Paul because he told me about this interview and I was looking forward to that interview. That was the highlight of my afternoon, Paul. Uh, <laughs> but my question is though, um, Sometimes people won't do things unless there's a benefit for them. And I realized that this guy was selling solar plant panels. I don't know if you've done this, but maybe position it in a way where, you know what, I wanna do this live interview because I wanna help you grow your, your business. I wanna help you grow your solar business. And I believe, I don't know, maybe you've done it, but I believe when you position it that way, people will be more open and more um, excited about the Facebook Live. I don't know, did you do that or not? Yeah, no, so I, I told him this is um, all about promoting your business, getting the word out there. Um, because he has told me, you know, that his business has, you know, like ups and downs and he wants to get a little more stable and he does want to start, um, you know, doing a little more marketing. And I'm like, hey, this is a perfect opportunity. I think, he, yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's just, you know, um, yeah, he just, he just found way too many things, uh, way too many excuses not to do it. And then I just backed away. One of the excuses was, hey, it's too windy. They're not going to hear us, right? So, yeah, so I just, yeah, so I just backed away. It's okay. Find somebody else. Yeah. Just find somebody else, right? You're giving somebody, yeah, that's, it. guys, the, we create opportunity. That's really what we do. We create a buyer and seller opportunity. We create an opportunity for people that are out in the community to get themselves exposure. And now you've got something valuable and viable that people can tap into to move their business, right? Because you're creating an audience around yourself and you're doing these interviews in these communities to be able to get that market presence for you. But it also, they get to step on those coattails. They get to be able to come with you, right? But the only thing you can do is say, here's the door. You can't walk them through the door. They have to walk through the door themselves. You can describe the door. It's a beautiful door. It's a wonderful door. It's going to do all these things for you when you walk through this door. But if they don't walk through it, find somebody else. All right. Yeah. And, and you're not going to do this to your friend, obviously, because he's your pal. But you find another solar panel guy. You find two other solar panel guys, you talk to them and saying, hey, listen, I'm talking to a couple of solar panel people. Maybe I'm putting a panel of solar panel people together, right? Get three people together. So tell your friends, say, hey, listen, you didn't come on the show, but you know what? I'm getting two other solar panel guys, your competitors. Why don't we come on to the show together and we'll all talk about solar panels in the industry. And now you can have your two cents. Oh, you don't want to do that? So your guy, your competitors are going to get a lot of, a lot of really awesome juice out in the community and you're not? Oh, okay. Well, there's the door. What, what do you want to do? Right, right. Right. Now you're not going to do that to your pal, but like use that for mortgages or something like that. If you, if you book a mortgage guy and he's like, eh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh no, I don't know. Find another guy because they want it worse than the other guy does. And they'll put a better show on anyways. They'll provide better material because they're excited. You need that. You need somebody that actually wants to do this shit because otherwise they're not excited guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. And trust me, you do not want to be doing an interview with somebody that's unexcited. 
trust me, I've done this. It's like, uh, it's like pulling teeth. You're like, come on, give me something here, man. Give me something here. I'm asking you questions and you give me one word answers. And I'm like, right, okay. So that's wonderful. I guess I'm talking to myself for 15 minutes. You know what I mean? Like you don't, that's, it's super unfun. So find somebody that's excited. Yeah, thanks. No problem, man. No problem. All right, we got five minutes left. Anybody else? Who else has got something that you want to share? Hey, nice to see you, Scott. How you doing, bro? Good. All right. Any other thoughts, comments? Who need who needs who? They need you more than you need them. Correct? Move on and check back later. Yeah, I love it. Uh, that's exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. Walk away. You don't need anybody. All you need is yourself. Everything yeah. is right. And one of the things that I've really like, it's funny because this industry is a very personal industry where people say, don't take it personal. It's just business. Well, you do take it personal. And you have to know that um, you can't take ownership over anyone else's negativity. So if someone's coming at you on uh, like a bull in a china shop, obviously they've got more shit going on in their lives than you're aware of, or you know, so take it, deflect it and move on. Hey Scott, uh, we're muting you, so don't don't touch. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mute and he unmutes, and then mute and then he unmutes. <laughs> I think it was going, you were muting, but I was clicking at the same time. But when I click it, it's so it we're all doing the same. Mute, mute, unmute, you muted, and Scott's like, "What the fuck is going on?" With you? He thought wanted to actually say something. It's like, come on, you guys are jerks. Seriously. <laughs> He's like, come on, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much. We are going to probably wrap this up on time for once, as opposed to the other two. Um, hope that you guys uh, enjoyed the body seminar. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about business. Um, so we've covered heart, mind, body, and then business. So business, we're going to get a little bit more into environment, atmosphere, and really how to apply everything into your business moving forward, really build that mega momentum. And That's That's um, yeah. From your final holistic approach. If you guys have any questions, any comments, um, anything you want to cover by next week, please feel free to drop it into the Mega Momentum chat. Dustin and I will chat about it and incorporate it into our business because we really want you guys to all have a really great takeaway from the Mastermind series and coaching series. So again, we want to make sure that this has value to you and that you're getting um, what you put into it. So uh, I will toss it back to you for final thoughts there, Big D, and uh, take it away. I go for the touchdown now. Uh, you know what? Next week, it's going to be a lot of fun. You have the power right now, right here, to be able to start your journey to architect the business that delivers the dream life that you want, right? So I'm in Mexico right now. I'm going to be in Mexico for six months. This is my life now. Six months and six months, probably four months and eight months to be honest with you. And I worked my ass off for this, but I worked my ass off with intention and with focus to be able to build the business that delivers the life that I wanna live, right? If you want the same thing, if you wanna travel, if you want the nice house, the nice car, you can do that. All those things can be done if you architect the business around the life that you actually want to live. So next week, that's what we're going to be talking about. You have the power, you can do this 100%. It's something that I learned from my last brokerage where I did not build the business with intention of the life that I wanted to live. And I found myself trapped, like in jail, in a business model, in a business that I could not change with a business partner that was super toxic. So now I have re I revamped my entire approach to building business. And in, in less than a year, I'm already six months in Mexico. Okay. Hey, Dustin. You do it too. And you can do it too. So, yes, hey, sir. How's your Spanish? Uh, mm, nobles. <laughs> oh, it's Espanol. Uh, no, it's, uh, I'm learning. I'm learning every single day. I learned a new word, uh, two new words, actually. Uh, chela, and that's another word for beer. I like beer. What is it, sorry? Uh, chela. Chelo, chela. That's the Mexican term for it. 